First Peter chapter 2. Look at verse 9. But ye are. Ye are, ye is. <laughs> it's in the now. You know, I told you the other day, this thing is not live. This game we're on is not live. Are you hearing me? It's not live. We're not trying to win. <laughs> if, you, if, you think, if you think your trouble is live, then that's your problem. You think it's life, so you're struggling. It's not, tell somebody it's not life. <laughs> the script was completed. Jesus handed the script over to the Father. And the father said, that's it, settled. And we were given the honor of playing it. We were given the honor as actors and actresses on the stage of life. You're going to have a problem if you don't follow the script, my brother, my sister. you got to follow the script. If you don't follow the script, you're going to miss your lines. And when you miss your lines, you get in the wrong place. And then, I don't know why. You're complaining because you missed your script. You're not with the script. Get back to the script. When you miss your script, get, get back to the script. Because the same script shows us how to find our way back and get in line. Are you still there? When you miss the script, you complain. I don't know why. I don't know why. I'm trying, but this is not working. I'm trying. I'm trying. I don't understand. I don't know why. Complaining. You're complaining to God, you're complaining to human beings. Because you lost the script. You're not following the script. If you were following the script, you would discover something. Doesn't matter where you're supposed to be when you follow the script. Some are going to be going like this. Some are going to be sitting on the sidewalk when you get there. And according to the script, they are supposed to get up and follow you. So they follow you. Use that script. See all those you... I said years ago, I saw it, I saw it. I said I was born as an answer to the cry of millions. How, how did I know? It was the script. It's in the script. Follow the script. Follow the script. I don't meet anyone by chance. I'm on the script. I always say, if I ever meet you, God planned it to be so. And when I meet you, I'm full of joy. I'm glad to meet you because I know it's part of the script. And it doesn't matter what you do. Good or bad, you're playing your role. That's it. You're playing your role. It don't matter what your role is. I know how I'm supposed to come out. In the script, I saw the end of it. In all these things. You get it? Hey, glory, hallelujah. <laughs> In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us. 
Hallelujah. Sit down one more time. Tell somebody this is Rapathon. So the word says, count it all joy when you go through diverse tests. Count it all joy. No matter what happens, count it all joy. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh you. Then when things begin to happen, like, oh, everything's turned upside down. No, you maintain your composure. You do. Why? Because all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. You've come to understand that. All things work together for good. They're all functioning together for my good. It's all supposed to turn. That's what the script says. With that, it doesn't matter how somebody treats you. You don't care. Treat me good or treat me bad, it don't matter. Do you get it? It don't matter. You treat me nicely, that's, that's up to you. You treat me badly, that's up to you. I'm not going to be sad or mad or unhappy. Why? Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, glory to God. Woo, hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. Somebody shout. Glory to God. Woo. <laughs> Sit down. church used to be in that position with hallelujah hallelujah the glory i mean years ago when i was younger that was a big song hallelujah amen hallelujah hallelujah of glory revive us again it used to be so powerful And we had our guys who used to sing it. Then I shocked them one day. I came in. And I said, listen, we're young. I came in. I said, that revive us. You don't sing it here again. And they were, oh. I said, because God never answers it. He never revives you. First of all, you're not supposed to die. Because to revive means to bring back to life. So, why would you die spiritually? Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's a, what about um, spiritual uh, dryness? I said, you got dryness? What about all the water of the Holy Ghost? Spiritual dryness? How can you, how can you ever get there? How can you ever get there when you're supposed to be praying the Holy Ghost? How can you ever get there? Spiritual dryness? Didn't you hear out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water? Out of your belly. Rivers of living water. Living water. 
You are calling to be made alive. Revive me. But from you should flow rivers of what? Living water. You are supposed to be giving life to other people. Oh, yeah, you know, when you go through some stuff, stop going through anything. Stop going through anything. Discover where you are. You have been in the wrong place, that's why. Open your eyes and see where you are. Get in the word and stay in the word. There's a new I, I, I. There's an I, I, I. Yay! You know, I was, I, was, I was doing something today. Oh, I should, maybe I shouldn't go that far. I'll just give you. <laughs> Hi. How much can we say? See, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is it. And you are in Christ. You are in him now. And he's in you now. You're in a new place now. So you discover, oh, I'm not in the dry land. I'm not in the dry place. Oh, I found my place. I said, well, where is that place? I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. This is my new home. This is my new environment. I, when the children of Israel went out of Egypt, they carried their own atmosphere. In the desert, when it was hot, they were covered with a cloud by God. In the night, when it was cold, they were protected by his fire. So they carried their own atmosphere through the desert, through that wilderness. You are of more value than many sparrows. Are you hearing me? You are of more value to God. And now you are in Christ where all things are available. Now start learning something. If you haven't started learning it, you got to start learning it. You'll be amazed. You'll be amazed. You'll be stunned. Practice using your mouth. Practice it. You can call, you can call customers. Call the best customers to your shop. You can, I mean, do you realize you can call for money? Money is a slave. Understand it. But for a lot of people, they're ruled by money because they don't understand it. Practice it. Somebody said, I tried it, didn't work. Because you haven't, you haven't learned it yet through the word. You see, we are to voice the word. Not lalia. Okay? Not just talk here. Uh -uh. It's a rhema from the logos of God in your spirit. The word has been deposited in your spirit. It's in there. So when you release it, it's the word of faith for the now, for the moment, and you are speaking at once with God. Didn't you read it? Hebrews chapter 11. Read from verse 1 to verse 3. Oh, you will love it. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. That, that, that business you're planning on opening in 2020. Have you received the evidence? Your faith is the evidence. Evidence, evidence, evidence. Evidence of things not seen. Next. For by it, by this evidence, by this faith. Remember when Jesus asked the disciples, where is your faith? When they were scared. When they were afraid, he said, where is your faith? In other words, Jesus expected them to use their faith. Say, I can use my faith. Use my, faith. my faith is substance. Faith is substance. Now faith is, substance. faith is the substance. I've got substance. You know, some, do you have the substance for this business? What they mean is, do you have the money for this business? Say, I've got the substance for it. I have the substance. I have the substance for this construction. I have the substance. Oh, come on, somebody. 
I have the substance. Do you have the substance? <laughs> you know, years ago, the Archbishop Benson Dahosa, I was in the in the service when he said something. He was opening the new dome. Well, the, the big faith dome, they called it. Beautiful structure is still there. So, on the opening day, we were all in there. Then he made a statement that I didn't understand immediately. But as I studied the word, I found out what he meant. He said, you may ask how much this building costs. He said, I'll tell you what it costs. It's a five-letter word. Then it went F-A-I-T-H, faith. It costs faith. And they're looking. And I, I, at that moment, I just believed. That's it. But I didn't know how. Then I saw, I got it. Faith is substance. Yes. Faith is substance. This is more valuable than dollars, francs. Are you hearing me? This is better. Faith is better. If you got it, if you got this substance, nothing will fail. Money can fail. But there are three that abide. Faith, hope, love. Put it back up there. Now faith is the substance of the building you hope to construct. Oh, you get it? Faith is the substance of that thing you're hoping to get. Do you have the substance? Now faith is the substance. Woo! Yeah. I'm thinking, if this thing gets better, what are you going to do? <laughs> now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence, the evidence of things not seen. Some guys are not seeing it, but you have the evidence. Have the evidence. Look at the next verse. For by it, by this substance, the elders obtained a good report. Look at the next one. Through faith we understand. That the words, the aeons were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Oh, I have a message that is a, a 13 part message on this subject. Get that one. If you can get that 20, it will help you. All right? This is because if I get into this one, this room will not be enough. <laughs> Are you hearing me? I got the substance. I got the substance. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever heard that term? Is he a man of substance? <laughs> you know, before, when... When, when the guys are sitting like this, and they say, are you a man of substance to do like this? Because you, you don't think you're a man of substance. You, you let it pass by, they're looking for the man of substance. It's not you. Are you a woman of substance? Have you found out who you are? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sit down.